So I have the honor of introducing Megan Gustafson today. She is actually a client of mine, but I would consider her a really good friend rather than a client. We've had hundreds of emails back and forth, probably many text messages and uh, phone conversations. So um, she has an amazing story about one of her horses named Joey that went from almost death back to full recovery and probably Megan, she feels better than she's ever felt in her life, right? Yeah. So can you tell us a little brief history about Joey and what you did, like her medical condition and what you did initially with conventional medicine and farrier work to try to get her better? Yes. Um, I got her when she was three and she seemed fine. I think that summer I wrote her, she was fine and she started going lame that fall. Um, so she already had shoes on and my farrier put pads on to kind of see if that would fix anything. It seemed to work for a little bit and then she started going lame again. And that didn't really stop for a couple years. She ended up being lame, um, ended up having white line disease. They had to resect. I think 80 to 90% of the front of her hoof wall. She was on stall rest for four months at a young age. I could only take her out for limited hand walking. Um, the vets just had me put her on a supplement that was, I guess, supposed to do something. So I did that. I did whatever I was told to do and I didn't really question anything or think too much about it. I just kept thinking, oh, hopefully this works. These people know what they're talking about. I trusted them to, you know, tell me what I needed to do for her since I wasn't a fairy or I wasn't a vet. Um, and she just didn't seem to get any better. She'd get better and then something else would happen. So she had the white line and then that's when she started going lame again, I think is when I reached out to you. What did, tell, tell everybody what Joey was for you as far as uh, show horse, uh, backyard horse, trail horse. And then were you able to ride her at the beginning when she started having these issues? Um, I was able to ride her. Joey is the first. I had horses growing up, and then after high school, I moved around and wasn't able to have any for about 16 years. So she was, well, I call her my heart horse. Um, she's so special to me, and getting her was, she was the first horse I had after not having horses for 16 years. So I didn't realize how much I missed having horses until I got her, and I would spend as much time with her as I could. Um, she reads me like a book. Um, so she was amazing. I would do, um, an ob my friend has an arena and an obstacle course, so we would do, she has trail clinics, obstacle course, arena work, natural horsemanship stuff, so I took her there a lot, um, and then I trail ride, so mm -hmm. she would go lame off and on, and um, sadly, when she would go lame, which I didn't, I was still working quite a bit, so I wasn't using her all the time, but when I did need to use her, if she was limping, I would just give her butte. And that's what everybody did, just butte her up and she'll be okay. And so that's what I would do, which I'm not real proud of, but. Well, you didn't know at that time. So, you know, I, I know that she's had an incredible journey as well as you, um, being, having her being your heart horse and having this exceptionally strong spiritual connection that you had with her and loving her probably more than anything in life. What were you going through mentally and emotionally when she was so sick? Like, what did you feel? I felt did horrible. Yeah, I felt horrible and that I should be doing more for her, but I really had no idea what else I could do. Um, and so in the back of my mind, it was always that there's something else going on. But at that time, I didn't know that there were other options that I could do. Um, and so I felt like I was like not kind of letting her down and not doing what I should as her owner. Um, but again, like helpless because I didn't know what else I could do. I was doing everything that the vets and farriers told me to do and spending a lot of money. <laughs> right. I didn't care about her and I was just like waiting for it to get better. Like I was being proactive and doing everything I could that they recommended and it just wasn't making a difference. She just continued to get worse. So how did you continue when she wasn't getting better? What did you actually do? Um, I know that you went the holistic route. Um, 
but were you familiar with that or were you holistic minded from the get go or did you learn this as you went? Um, I've been holistic minded for us for probably 20 years. Like I've known that there are things that I'm not putting in my body that are recommended to most people. Um, we've changed our diet, our lifestyle, what we use in our home, all of that. So for us, I've been holistic minded for a very long time and very interested in natural health and staying above the wellness line without using anything with harmful side effects. So at one point I had, well, my equine chiropractor had, I was used, starting to use some things that we were using on Joey and it was making a difference, but mm -hmm. I didn't know like the power of what I was using. I knew about it for us, but not so much for the horses. So I was just kind of experimenting and it was helping. Um, and he had encouraged me to start helping other people and their horses using what I was using. And I was just like, I don't even know what I'm doing. Like, you just tell me what to do and then I'll do it. So I know that you eventually contacted me and how did you find out about me? how did you find out about my consulting services? I had, I'd heard about you from, well, you were in Northern Minnesota and had an animal conference one fall. We were in Colorado working. And so I wasn't able to go. Um, my equine chiropractor was there. You were there. And I missed it. But I remember hearing about it from friends that were going to go. And then when I started using things on Joey, the natural things on Joey, and my equine chiropractor recommended I start helping other people with their horses, then I thought, I know somebody can, who can help people with their horses and help me with my horse. So that's when I reached out to you and asked if, I didn't even know if you did consulting. I, and I was like, how am I gonna get her to Northern Minnesota from Iowa? So I didn't, I just was praying that um, you'd be able to help. Sure, so um, I know that we were looking at the white line disease as maybe her major issue and trying to support her immune system with different things. But it wasn't until you sent me some videos that really triggered something in my mind. So would you like to tell just briefly what Joey had going on after I watched the videos and after you got some blood tests done? Yeah. Well, and I think, so she was lame again and supposedly the white line wasn't supposed to do anything again. Like that was cleaned up and fine. So I was like, well, what does she have going on now? That's when I consulted with you and sent the videos and she was it kind of went slight lame and then went downhill really fast. Um, we live in northern Minnesota. There's a lot of tick diseases. You had mentioned once, have you had a tick? Have you had her check for Lyme? And I said no, because I didn't want her to have Lyme because I didn't want to have to give her antibiotics because I knew from years of researching humans and hearing terrible things about these horses that have chronic Lyme that people don't know how to treat Lyme. So I wasn't, I didn't want her to have that. And so I was just hoping that that wasn't what it was. Well, she started going lame on her right leg instead of her left and then was in terrible shape when I sent you those videos where she could barely walk. And that's when you said, you need to, <laughs> you need to bring her in today and get her checked mm -hmm. because this could be, this is serious. This is Lyme. And, and then she ended up with three tick diseases. Yeah. She had, she had the whole gamut, which is really rare. I've seen it in dogs before, but that was the first horse that I'd seen that tested positive for Lyme, Ehrlichia, and anaplasmosis. And so she was a very sick horse. Um, and I remember that she took a turn for the worse. We started her out on a natural protocol, um, some supplements, essential oils, and so on and so forth. And then um, we... I told you, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I think I really pushed you to do the antibiotics, even though you were against them, because I was telling you that Lyme is a very stealthy organism. It hides in tissues like the periosteum around the bone and the spinal fluid, where the immune system kind of is blocked off from that. And uh, you had to order, special order, the doxycycline, and it was... Um, in short order at that time. I mean, you couldn't get it anywhere. And so there was one pharmacy that your veterinarian was ordering it from. And while you're waiting for that to come in, she really took a turn for the worse. And I remember you called me, um, I can't remember if it was uh, Sunday after the fact or what, but you thought you were gonna have to put her down that weekend. And what was going through your mind at that point? I suppose, I don't know. I still had faith that what we were going to do was going to work. Um, just hoping that she made it, that this wasn't going to be the end. 
Um, oh, sorry. You, did you pray over her at that point or anything? Oh, yeah. Oh. Praying constantly. I don't know what's going on with my video. <laughs> I don't either. <laughs> hi. But, um, <laughs> hi. I kind of, you know, I'm at a horse camp and we don't have the greatest reception. So I suppose maybe. I'm at my chiropractor's office right now. Um, so you see the background, she does some acupuncture. So it looks like a medical oh. office. <laughs> um, I had to come in because my cell surface was not working. Okay. Um, yeah, lots of praying um, because I wasn't ready for her to leave and just hoping that I wasn't too late, that I'm really feeling like I should have reached out. I should have done something natural a long time ago that um, I didn't do what I should have for her a lot, you know, when I should have. So just hoping that it wasn't too late. Right. And I think I told you just double up on what you're doing right now. What have we got to lose? And yeah. we'll wait until the antibiotics come in and we'll get you started on that protocol. Um, and I, you know, I just want to commend you, Megan, because I don't know of any very few, maybe a handful of clients and pet parents animal guardians that would do what you did to get her back. Um, you were so diligent. You listened to everything I said, even though I told you, you make up your own mind about what you want to do. I'm not going to spend your money, but you do what you feel comfortable with. And you researched and you, I mean, you went all out and you did everything you could for Joey and look at how it paid off. Um, so what advice would you give to someone who may be, may be potentially facing that same kind of prognosis with her animals. Um, you know, do you go by intuition or what did you do? What would you tell somebody? Well, first, it, having the natural options that I knew that were safe, that were not going to harm her at all, um, and you explaining that, you know, a lot of the things she dealt with were immune system, like if her immune system would have been where it needed to be, she may not have had any of those things go wrong. But what and then the um, the importance of a probiotic. So, you know, when we did all of these natural things, but then after after the antibiotics and everything, doing a probiotic to get her gut health back where it needed to be just made sense to me. Like I knew I mean, God designed our bodies to be healing machines. And I mean, I, I was thinking about that for us as humans, but I just hadn't put it towards the horses yet. So I felt really empowered that I had a lot of options. There's so many resources to use. Um, and then having you to guide me just for moral support and sharing your expertise was really empowering that I could do this. And so I would just tell anyone, don't give up. Like no matter what's going on with your animal, there's a bazillion things that we can do to support their bodies safely, naturally, and just help them be healing machines, which is what they were designed to do. Absolutely. Do you think that she would have recovered just with conventional treatment only? No, I think she would, she'd be dead. I do, I do too. So just so that everybody knows, what kind of time frame did it take from the beginning when you first had issues with the white line disease the, from that little cut that she had on her coronary band to when we declared her fully recovered? What, do you remember what the time frame was? May 2015 until October 2019. Wow, what a journey. <laughs> and, and thinking outside the box, a lot of people are afraid to do that. And I just want to give you a huge pat on the back and a big woohoo because, <laughs> because a lot of people wouldn't have taken that leap of faith. So, um, I do know that you have a healing barn movement, and I think that is a fascinating concept. Can you explain a little bit about how you came up with that name and what it all entails? Yes. Well, we've been part of kind of the healing home movement where we're using holistic things, natural options in our home to remove toxins and create what we call a healing home. And then when Joey, when I realized that I could be helping her the same way, I thought I need to let more horse owners know about this. So as I started sharing with my friends who had horses, they started experimenting and using the things that I'd had great results with. They of course had great results. So what do people want to do when they find something that works? They share it with their friends. And so the healing barn movement is a group of horse owners. And I mean, most horse owners have dogs and cats, et cetera. So it's a, it's animal parents that are 
kind of joining together in a mission to help raise awareness that there are safe options out there with no side effects um, that can help your bot your animals bodies do amazing things so just helping to educate as many horse owners as we can um, and save horses the five years that Joey went through because when we started the natural holistic treatment with you um, like the white line was the last thing so that was last summer of 18 um, it was a year and then she was completely sound so even just from the three tick diseases that was in June of last year to October um, that was the most radical improvements I've ever seen in her and she's been sound um, for well, I think over a year now so and you've been riding her without any restrictions correct oh yeah yeah she's been barefoot and sound um, self-warming she looks and feels amazing um, I have yeah she's she's feeling better now than she ever did that is just fantastic. I mean, I couldn't be happier for you. And again, this is this has created a really good friendship between you and me because I wouldn't have known you if Joy hadn't have been sick. And I wouldn't have known about your healing barn movement. I think I read somewhere where you have a goal to have one million barns um, with natural holistic products and therapies, right? Yes. Yeah, I plan on leaving a legacy. Like when I go... Um, I want the work that we're doing now to impact generations and generations. Wow. I am so proud of you. I just can't stress that enough, Megan. But um, one final thing, if you can just give everybody who's listening to this video words of wisdom, what words of wisdom would you share with others um, about keeping their animals healthy with holistic or natural therapies? Um, I think, the basics are start with whole body wellness. So stop, I was feeding, stop feeding things with sugar that have bad ingredients in them. A lot of the products and stuff that we were using were causing more harm than good. Um, so thank you for educating me on all of that, but keep it simple. I love how you always say, like we need to let horses get back to the way they were. Um, quit dumping all this feed into them that's full of sugar and harm, synthetics. Um, I use a whole body supplement on Joey. So now my healthy horses, like for maintenance, I have some simple things, simple and affordable things that I can use on them every day that we use every day ourselves that my cats get every day. So just keep it simple um, and allow things time to work. Like it takes 60 to 90 days for our cells to completely regenerate. So don't just try something for a few days and then say it doesn't work. Um, give natural things a fighting chance. Um, and I think you'll be surprised at what you can do. That is perfect. Those are great words of wisdom. And um, I think you've got, someday we'll do another Zoom call. You've had a couple other horses, especially Taz, that has an amazing story too. So oh, yeah. to have you share that journey oh. too, Megan. <laughs> but uh, yeah. I think that's all for today. So I'll... Um, Thank you so much again, and you are in what part of Arizona right now? Um, we're in the Tucson area right now. Oh, okay, great. And when will you be back home? Soon? Um, we will be back the end of March. So we're just going to different horse camps and helping people with their horses and sharing what we've learned and just helping people along the way and riding um, when we can. So kind of a working vacation, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, working from Tucson in the winter feels like vacation. Right. All right. <laughs> well, you have a good day and thanks again for coming on the call. Okay. Yeah. Thanks, Dr. Barb. Bye. Bye-bye.